Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. And here we have another live stream. So, uh, quite honestly, I don't remember what we talked about last week. We did backgrounds and I'm not exactly remembering what we're supposed to do this week. So there you have it. I guess I'll wait for some people to jump on in and until then I'll just start sketching. Uh, by the way, uh, I've been planning on doing our next uh, series, and it's going to be Let's Create a Supervillain. So we'll be doing that real soon. Um, I'm actually thinking I'll just, you know, start sketching out like some kind of superhero pose, and we'll start off with that, but uh, that'll be the next series. So there's a lot of people asking, um, you know, asking about doing that series after we did the Let's Create a Superhero, so now we'll do the Let's create a villain, then we'll do like maybe, you know, superhero chick and just kind of go from there and just, I don't know, it's always fun creating characters. That's like one of my, one of my hobbies, one of the things I really dig. Hey, what's up? A few people chiming in. Good to have you. Welcome back. So, uh, I don't know if there's enough people here to answer yet, but, uh, I don't remember what we discussed for the topic being this week, uh, which we could shoot off the hip. It, it kind of always shifts into something else anyways, but um, does anybody remember uh, what we talked about for uh, this week's topic? Really got to start writing stuff down apparently. Super evil chick. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we could do that. I'm drawing a dude right now, but we could switch it up. Super evil chick. You know, that could be... Uh, we're getting ready to do the uh, the villain. Uh, let's create a super villain. Uh, it could be a super villain uh, chick. Woman, lady, you know. Um, so do you guys, uh, guys want to do something like that? We could make a evil villainous damsel yeah not really sure uh, chief Anator just still trying to figure out um, you know what we're gonna come up with today I, you know we talked about something last week comic layout or character design um, yeah, I mean, we could lay out more of a page and talk about, uh, storytelling through the page, that kind of thing. Um, any number of things, you know, you guys just tell me, so I'm just here to draw. So you just tell me what, uh, what you think would be cool and we'll, we'll go for that. Uh, let's see, we could do a hero feller today as a arch rival for the villains. Yeah, we could do that. You know, so the superhero or super villain series that I was going to start next, I was just going to start off with a sketch and then let everybody comment in the uh, description box. And then, you know, through about two, possibly three videos, we'll uh, refine it and come up with a end result of a character. So today would be a little bit more of just, you know, explaining process, you know, talking about, you know, how we come to those types of uh, decisions or whatever. Yeah, we could do that too. So you guys want to, let's do this. We'll try to do like a, a short little uh, page layout, thumbnail it out and kind of explain some story ideas and you guys can contribute. Uh, so we'll just call this a warm-up sketch. So this is this is just me doodling, trying to get in the in the zone a bit here. So let's just uh, move this guy off to the side. Uh, friend choice says hi, hello, hello, friend. Sorry if I'm slaughtering that name. I probably am. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and lay out a page. So I'll create a new layer here in Manga Studio. And, whoop, while holding the, I'll just create frames this way. It's easier. All right, so rectangle. This will be our comic book page. All its glory. Looks like about 11 by 17 or 10 by 15, just so you know. Um, you know, when you work 11 by 17, that's kind of like what you do traditionally uh, with that border around the edge. But if you're working digitally, you can kind of just say a 10 by 15 page, really. It's probably easier to do that. But all right, anyways, um, let's think of a, we need a story. We need a concept. So and I like to draw another layer over top of the. The framing layer makes it a bit easier. So uh, we just need some kind of idea. Anybody want to shoot some ideas out there? We got a whopping 12 people watching. You guys really got to tell your friends, you know that? That's that's your job. I got to do the drawing. I got to be here delivering. You guys got to tell your friends and spread the word for me. Please and thank you. Futuristic city of Earth, the realm of the, hum the human empire. That sounds interesting. So we start off with a futuristic city. Um, how so? How so? You take on the blue markings. What? I'm not getting that. What are you saying? So let's start off with a futuristic city. Um, your first shot on a page like this is going to be called your establishing shot. It really doesn't matter where you put it or how you put it. It could be horizontal, it could be angular, but it should be the main, you know, like this wide, um, wide shot. And I don't mean wide, like as in left to right, but just something, a shot that's got like a lot of information. So let's say we're doing this futuristic city. And this is my idea of futuristic buildings. You know, they kind of look like just globs right now, but trust me, we'll get there. So, you know, you do like these weird looking buildings, and that's that's why I call it futuristic. And then the other thing you do, some that are up close and a lot larger, you know, where you start making out some of the, the real details of it or something. So they got these weird angles and stuff, and, you know, that's why it's modern or futuristic or alien or whatever so you do some of those up close you do those darker so you can pretty much just silhouette these in you know just keep in mind a lot of the same rules that that uh, are in place for like say digital painting or scene creation and other uh, art styles still work with comics so the darker stuff's always up front so you could do like the silhouette and then back here you can do you know, um, you know, medium or good amounts of detail, but then fade off to like just the shape, not even a, a dark silhouette, just the shape of the buildings. So by doing that, you can stage it and get this depth kind of thing going. But this could be your establishing shot. It doesn't have to be any certain way. Typically, I would do a horizontal, you know, landscape shot up here. But let's say this is our establishing shot. So here's frame one. And so this brings the reader in to say, okay, you're in this modern, you know, futuristic city. Uh, you know, you could give it like two, two planets up here and then you're automatically, you know, you know, you're on a different planet other than Earth, you know. Um, so do something like that. And, uh, and then you just go from there. So that's your establishing shot. That's usually referred to, like you'll see people put EST. Uh, that lets the reader know where they're at in the story, and then you start from there and work uh, further into the page. Um, all right, let's read the comments here real quick. I think you guys are just talking amongst yourselves, right? Um, when you start up Manga Studio, Studios, I has like these blue markings on it, and I don't know how to take them off to get a blank page. Okay, so you're talking about the uh, uh, registration marks or the, uh, oh goodness, where's that at? Um, I think that's under view. Crop mark, default border settings. 
hold on, let me pan back so we can see the page. It's going to be under one of these these view uh, type settings. I want to say it was the crop mark, but maybe not. Um, paper. That would be the background. That just for some reason took the visibility off there. Yeah, I want to say it's this, but let me hit OK here and see what we get. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to look into that for you, bud, or uh, uh, check in with uh, the team over at Manga Studio for something like that. But yeah, there, it's it's usually in View or Windows or things like that. I want to say View. and then um, Or it's going to be under when you create a new document, whether or not you take those off. So let me see, Cover Page, um, Story Information, Manga Draft Settings. So maybe it's... Maybe it's this one where I've got it unchecked. Let me scroll down and see what else is in here. Yeah, this is all for the story settings, multiple pages. Check whether to export fan size printing data. I don't think that's it. Yeah, I'll tell you the first thing I'd probably try is mess with these different presets. And maybe you'll find one in there that doesn't have them. But if not, I would say it, would, it should be under view and like... Show selected tone areas. Set to get grid settings ruler. Yeah, so hopefully you guys, uh, somebody will chime in and tell them why it's at. I'm not exactly sure. I wish I could help you with that one. Okay, so say we got our establishing shot here, and then we go into another another scene. You guys kind of. Give me ideas for the next panels and I'll draw them in. So I'm just going to show you the typical page layout of it. And then what I could also do is drag another copy of this over and show you how... Let me size these ones up. Or down, I should say. Let's drag this over. And we could even do another variation of the same um, same storyline, just to show how you know how easily things can be interpreted various ways. Okay, good luck on that. Sorry, I wish I could have help, helped on that matter. Um, maybe the hero is in a a diner or something similar. Rain is pouring down outside, Blade Runner style, and he's looking down into a glass uh, abyss of a coffee cup. <laughs> nice okay so yeah so the next panel uh you know we we zero in on where the hero is and we'll say that you know and and you know i would still get the feeling that we would still want to see him somewhat off in the distance so you know maybe not right from the city to the the diner to the up close shot but maybe there's really no rules and and a lot of this is based on how it's narrated as well um, so let's zoom into here and let's say that, uh, let's see, we could, we could do the easy thing, which would be the silhouette. So you kind of, you know, you see the hero or antagonist, protagonist, whatever, whatever you want to call him. I think it's protagonist, right? So the hero is looking down into his coffee cup like this. It doesn't look very hero-esque, but he's just kind of in deep thought or whatever. And I'm not saying I'm going to go with this one. This is like the easy scenario. Like if you go for the the silhouettes are always the really easy, quick thing to, to get you in the story. Uh, and then if you wanted to make it look like you're looking through a diner window, that would probably help sell the narrative that you explained. So you'd do like the the building from the outside, the glare on the windows. So that you know you're looking from the window. And then, you know, like you mentioned, the rain. So you do like the little lines with the dots at the end or whatever. And you gotta do like some bouncing off of stuff. That always helps it look more like it's, you know, rain or whatever. And then, you know, you do like the, the drips on the windows. Just things like that to help, you know, paint that picture, that abysmal kind of setting and you could do like textured material i wouldn't say i wouldn't say brick but without having to overthink it i'll th just throw in like the idea of some brick in there but 
being that they're futuristic buildings, you'd probably want to come up with something other than brick. I'm pretty sure for this far in the future that, you know, they got past brick and mortar, but. All right, uh, what else? Maybe the heroes, and uh, that's a good idea. Hey, any tips for a young comic book artist? Uh, main thing is just to, to do it, you know, just uh, the best tip I give to any young comic book artist is make comics, you know, get out, you know, and do it with your buddies and, and don't wait around. Like, uh, the more I do this stuff, the more I realize, like, it's all about you just sitting down and doing it um, versus, uh, you know, thinking about it too much. Just get in there and, and make some comics, and uh, the more you put put out there, the better you'll get. Okay, um, so yeah, so what, what should the next scene be? And, and, you know, let's do this. So, like, he's looking down at his coffee cup, and it's like this intense scene, and you don't get that from right there, right? You just get that kind of your, you know, and you could do, like, something on the glass, like, you know, Dave's Diner or something, you know, just something. I'm just saying, like, so you know, you know, where you're at or something like that in the scene, um, but anyways, uh, the next one could be like a little bit more intense uh, or dramatic or, melod I don't know, whatever the word is, dramatic. And then, uh, you know, so now we've got the coffee cup, you know, real overly large, kind of going off frame like this. You know, you could get some of his hand in there, do the really big overly detailed thumb knuckle or thumb knuckle thumbnail. Sorry. You know, whatever. And so, and that looks horrible, but hopefully you get the idea. And so, and keep in mind that whenever you're doing this part, don't wor don't worry about pretty drawings. You know, that's um, I have to worry a little bit about it because I got you guys watching me, so it's like making me want to overdraw it or draw it better. But uh, but really, the parts like this are all about you know nailing the idea. So like, say you had this idea that the hero is looking down into the coffee cup, and you see his silhouette you know, in there, you wouldn't get too detailed with this, but enough to know that's kind of what you're looking at, you know, the ripples and the, the way you shade it or whatever, you know, so it's, it's all about getting that idea down at this stage, you know, it's obviously got to be coherent, you got to be able to look at it and go, remember your, your thoughts, what you were trying to accomplish, you know, you could do like a fork back here or something, um, you know, but that's that's all you want to worry about at this stage is like the idea, the concept, the the sequential storytelling of it, and and you can you should you should be able to feel that with just these rough lines. And once you get that down, uh, it's a lot easier to run through the whole book, put everything in this stage, and then come back and add all the fancy details and cool stuff. You know. Okay, uh, hold on. The comments are coming in kind of fast. Let me see here. I have one, but it's obvious that most people tell you. Oh, hold on. Let me go back here. Um, see where we left off. A hologram, a hologram broadcast gets his attention or a loud noise. So, how do you make a living? Is it from YouTube? Is it from the YouTube channel? Uh, no, I don't make a living from YouTube. Um, actually, what I make off YouTube is very low, but I'll sell things off Gumroad. Uh, I have a Patreon page to help me support the work that I do here. Um, I do storyboards freelance uh, for commercials, uh, the occasional comic book cover and, and commission job. So it's kind of a hodgepodge. I'm a freelance artist, so I just, any and everything. I do a little bit of design, but I try to keep it all illustration work. Um, digital paint stuff and, and all that so uh, and a lot of tutorials I, I sell tutorials on Gumroad and then make some that even go up on various digital platforms uh, so let me see here actually this is a question for you Rob how would you plan and create a story like you have done for Blackstone how did you plan the story arcs and character storylines that fit all together you know uh, Chief Anator I'm real messy about it I'll be honest I, I do kind of this drawing uh, illustration style first and then I I, uh, I, I kind of see everything visually in my mind uh, which is why I'm more of an artist than a writer and then I go back through and I, I start to kind of mix story with it so I'm thinking of a story as I illustrate it but I do it uh, illustration first um, where a writer would write every bit of it down climax story arcs 
interactions, multiple, uh, you know, storytelling, um, you know, I don't know all the terminology, but the things that make a good story, all the, the multiple, um, backstories that are involved. I don't do as much of that. I, I need to, I'm trying to study more writing myself now and grow that, uh, ability of, of my own. Um, but I basically just, I see it visually in my mind and then I illustrate and create a story as I go. Uh, futuristic police car flies past the window. I like the idea too where something catches his attention. So maybe we can combine that together real quick. Uh, and then I'm not mad at you. Don't You don't know anything about those margins. But I was just wondering due to your page always being blank. Um, appreciate the call regardless of how you use it. Yeah, so, so basically I just... The reason why my page is always blank is because I use a template that I created that is like off the the comic book uh, uh, Bristol board that I would use so that's really all you have to do is just size your page up to 10 to 10 by 15 at 300 dpi and or uh, or 11 by 17 but just use a regular comic book template and you're good to go uh, wow. wow so why not try to get into Marvel or DC is it really hard um, yeah, getting into Marvel and DC is really hard. Um, and, and I don't, I honestly don't know that I'm per se ready. I, and I, I, that probably sounds bad. I mean, I, but I want to be, you know, fully forthcoming and honest. Those guys have to, you know, churn out amazing amounts of, of illustration work and they're exceptional at what they do. Um, so, and, and it's been a long time since I've ever sent in samples, but you know, when I was younger, I sent in samples and got the rejection letters or, you know, you need to work on this, you need to do that. And then they even said um, that they quit taking samples. And then, you know, people like, um, oh, God, what's his name? The, the editor that looks for artists. Um, CB, C, CB Blonsky, something like that. God, slaughtering his name. That's probably not good. But anyways, uh, you can look him up. He's He's always on. Uh, various things, you know, looking at artist work, doing artist reviews and things like that. And they, you know, I, I heard one of his interviews and he said, you know, just worry about getting your stuff good enough and we'll find you. <laughs> it sounded really disheartening, honestly, but, uh, but, you know, and I guess in a sense, Hey, just, just really hone your craft and, and the rest will happen, you know? And I, I kind of believe that because in this, this, uh, digital age that, that we all live in now, Every time you post something, you're you're gaining exposure. You're growing your brand, uh, your brand being you as an artist or your art style or whatever. Um, so it it does kind of work that way. Even if you know, I'd, I'd love to say I want to just send stuff to a big company and know immediately uh, if I'm good enough. Um, but the other thing is that you know they they kind of want you to, as far as doing that. They want you to go to those big conventions and show your work there. So if you really want to get that immediate response and, and make some connections, the best way are large conventions. Uh, the best one that they always talk about being the best way to uh, to connect with people is uh, um, San Diego. You know, but it's very expensive. But you go to that show and you show your work, and you know they'll have uh, uh, review sessions or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's your that's your way to get that immediate response and gauge of where you're at. Uh, but past that, I say just create lots and lots of your own stuff and get it out there to everybody. The digital age is, is here and it's a lot easier. So, yeah, good to have you, Kevin. Glad you're only 20 minutes late. That's awesome. Uh, which is harder to draw, anime, graphic novel, or comic? Thanks for the page setup info as well. Yeah, um, you know, that's really just based upon who you are as an artist and what you like to draw. To me, anime is actually kind of hard because I don't, Typically, I'm still stuck in this American 90s comic thing that I love so much. So uh, anime, to me, is a little bit more difficult, you know. So I, I guess that's all subjective to what kind of art style you, you hone, uh, you know, your, your uh, goodness, you gravitate towards. And I couldn't get that out. And, uh, and then, you know, in turn, it'll feel like everything's easier or harder in, in respect to that, I would think. Isn't it like 20 pages or so a week at DC or Marvel? No, I, I've heard a lot of artists that just do a page a day, but they don't take many breaks, you know, because they're, they're maybe slow artists. I've also heard of other artists that could do two pages a day, um, 
you know, and I'm sure there's some that are even better than that, but that's, that seems to be the, you know, like the Jim Lee guys and McFarlane. McFarlane towards the end, I think, could do uh, two pages a day, even inked or something. It, you know, he's ex in uh, insanely fast. But, you know, the, the sad thing is, is that a lot of times when I hear, like, the page rates and stuff, it's not that great. Like, that's the that's the hard part to get past. Like, I love comics, and I'd, I would love to be an artist for Marvel or DC. Um, but, you know, I also don't want to be broke in the process, you know, which really sucks to say. But I've heard some pretty, pretty, uh, uh, some horror stories about what some of, uh, some of those illustrators make. Um, which, you know, money's not the only driving factor to, uh, to me and being an artist. I mean, definitely not. You know, artists, uh, typically don't make as much as I'd like. But, um, you know, I also don't want to struggle. Uh, financially to be an artist you know so I try to try to do as many things as I can to uh to make sure that it doesn't happen you know and like uh like for instance you know storyboarding a lot of people are real unfamiliar with storyboarding but the rates are, are really high they're really good so you got to wait uh, a lot to get a job which sucks at times you know so you might sit around uh thinking you're out of work or whatever but then a big job will come through and it makes up for it um, so, you know, a lot of people don't even think about that, but in a lot of ways, it's like drawing comics. It's not as cool, you know, as far as like, you don't get to do a lot of the superhero stuff, uh, quite as much, but there's still some good storytelling in there. And it's, uh, it's still, it's still drawing for a living. So, you know, I'm pretty happy when I get those jobs. And Kevin knows, Kevin you used to do some storyboards, didn't you? I'm pretty sure we talked about that before. Uh, read watch Kirkman's manifesto if you want to know why Marvel or DC might not be for you. Oh yeah, thanks David. Um, yeah, and Kirkman's uh, amazing. You know, I, I haven't watched that or read or watched that, but I'll definitely check that out. Um, yeah, he he's just an amazing character, and like, you know, if anybody's like, um, oh god, what do you call it? Is uh, an inspirational type person. That's that's one of them. You know, and that's the, that's the only scary thing, too. We're not all going to be Robert Kirkman's and Todd McFarlane's and Jim Lee's. You know, we're going to be some, some people are just going to be some obscure, um, you know, guys that don't really get that fame and fortune type thing going, you know. I'm not saying that you're not just as happy doing comics, because I would, I would love to just draw comics every day, you know. I, I try to, regardless of not working for uh, Marvel or DC, you know. Uh, I am very late. Jazz says, yeah, that happens. I'm I'm very late quite often myself. Uh, Dan won't be able to watch. I'm still at work. Uh, sorry to hear that, Seth. Okay, so this is a really bad sketch, and I was just kind of rambling there, as always. Um, so, you know, in something like this, you'd probably do something where you see, like, you know, you're almost getting a little bit of this upshot, so you'd see, like, some of the ceiling or something, um, some of the windows coming downward in perspective. You know, some action lines, maybe knocks over his car. You see the, the brim of the coffee and some of it's splashing out. And it goes off the border to the next page. No, just kidding. Sorry. Couldn't help it. All right, so it just splashes a little bit out of the coffee cup. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so now let me know what you guys want to see. We could either take what we have here and I could sketch it over here, the same page layout, and then try to do it in a different... Because uh, that's really important to do. Uh, or we can try just a different store altogether. So what do you guys think? Yeah, so... because um, Let me just do this. Let me just go ahead and take this story uh, design that we have here. And let me draw another version off to the side. The reason being is I think this is really important. Um, a lot of times artists will draw something, want to go with the first thing, um, or sometimes we do or whatever in the sake of saving time. I just want to show you if you keep these thumbnails really basic, then you don't have to worry so much about that. So let's just go over here and then again we start with an establishing shot. So we'll do the traditional horizontal, you know, or you know what, even better yet, instead of making it so rectangular, let's do this. Let's do a nice you know, really panoramic kind of shot. So the thinner you make it height-wise, the more you're going to get this uh, panoramic kind of perspective. 
So, uh, yeah, same there. Same story, differently. Yeah, same story, differently. Yep. Zombies are always in good taste. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we could do some zombies. Zombies are fun. So we got the same futuristic city, you know, and you do the you do the building up close. You can do that same uh, kind of effect. So you got one building that's really, uh, you know, really detailed or or even silhouetted out, but just up close. So we'll do that. And that doesn't look really modern, but you know, it's it's up close. So, but then the cool thing about this kind of shot is you can get all these tiny little buildings and really show the the vastness of the you know the scene the city the size of the city the scale all that stuff so um so you do the couple up close details whatever it's really fast you know and the, the whole name of this game is 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 be okay with drawing it really fast and really sketchy and you know again we said we're maybe on a different planet so there's two uh two moons or two planets in the distance and funky clouds and a little bird because you know there's birds even on this world so there's there's uh there's our you know this scene right here just as a retake um and then uh now we'll take the next scene he's in the diner uh maybe we just do an aerial shot we don't necessarily need to know that he's in the diner yet or we could do a a downward a bird's eye view so let's see how would how do we place that let's try um we got to remember too that that these uh, little panels are like beats. So you got dun, 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 you know. And so this shot at the bottom where he reacts and kind of hits the coffee and freaks out or whatever, this should almost be a little bit bigger because it's a it's a more impactful beat. It's a it's like a dun, 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 you know, at the end of the thing. So you gotta you gotta show that. Where doing that in a small panel like that kind of diffuses that emotion a little bit. So let's try uh, working up to that. So we'll do. These ones smaller, like this, like this, one, two, right, and then, and then the last one, we'll tilt it a bit, we'll have it come in front of the other panel, and this will be the one that, you know, he kind of reacts. So it, it makes a little bit more sense in, in the page layout to do something like that because it'll, it'll emphasize the, um, you know, the um, intensity of that little, you know, emotion or whatever. Okay, so we'll do a bird's eye view of the diner. So we've got, we're slowly pulling into the, the city. So we've got the far off shot. Here we've got the bird's eye view of the diner. So we'll do like this slight angle. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want this to be a, a squared off building because it's, you know, in a modern kind of setting. So I'm sure things would be a lot less square or whatever. So we'll do like these weird little shapes off it. You know, maybe even change the windows from being square to, I don't know. And we see him, you know, kind of through the window, you know, at the table or whatever. You know, just some little silhouette of him. You could have like the diner sign up here or something. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, you get the idea. So. Uh, so now we're looking down at the diner. We see him through the window. Oh, yeah, you got to have the rain. So there's rain bouncing. There's puddles down here. There's water dripping off the side of the building. You know, so all those little details, you can still get in the sketch just to remember the mood. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfection, you know, so little droplets of rain, whatever. So there's our, our diner shot uh, from a somewhat of a bird's eye view. And, oh, and little things like this, too. Put, like, a street lamp or, you know, lamp off the back, something like that. Stuff like that just, you know, is great, especially if it's going to go to color or even for inking later. Uh, you know, kind of pinpointing little light sources like that are a good thing. 
<clears throat> okay, so now uh, just reading a couple of the comments real quick. I uh, have to go, but I'll definitely watch this later. Yep, appreciate that. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you don't mind. Um, yeah, and just want to say to you guys, if you can, try to share these as well so I can get a little bit more traction to the live stream. Uh, it helps me, you know, just dedicate time to it. So uh, maybe it could be Nor Zombies, a little fusion of styles. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, and then Chief Anator, well, it sucked. Just turned off the video by accident, but uh, but I'm back. Okay, good to have you back. Um, okay, so the next shot is the cup of coffee. He's looking down into it and seeing a silhouette. Uh, maybe that's like a, you know, like a, you know, uh, enhances the moment of thought or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think how else we could do that, which, you know, honestly, I kind of like this one. I'd probably just, just keep it. So that's going to happen sometimes too, where you're looking at the pages and you're adjusting them and redrawing them. But some of them you might just go, well, I really like that idea. I'm going to keep it, but just to change it up just a bit, um, we'll do like the, I don't know. We'll do like we're slowly zeroing in on him. So he's he's still off in the distance just a little bit. Not much. But you can see he's, he's got his coffee cup with both hands. So he's pr either pretty uh, pretty thirsty or he's he's really addicted to caffeine like I am. But he's got he's he's just looking down at his coffee cup intently. And, you know, maybe maybe just still somewhat silhouetted in. So we see him off in the distance. You know, you can have some of the other stuff closer, like the uh, the other booth or whatever. It could be, you know, really close and blocking him. And, you know, you do the little perspective lines and get your background stuff in there and all that. So that's just another way where we're just kind of getting closer. So it's, you know, that beat thing again where it's like, you know, even though this is a, kind of a longer beat, so you could take in the whole... Uh, city and then dumb dumb and then here it's like you know something happens he's shocked or there's an explosion or whatever so now we want to do another intense uh thing where we look up and you know he's freaking out um i don't know what he's how else we could do that up shots are always good for intense moments down shots are going to make the character appear smaller um so i guess we'd still go with an up shot maybe we could even just just go really close up since we've got all these distance shots let's just take this like more extreme close up um, like this and we'll still do a bit of an up shot you know I hate drawing up shots they're like the hardest thing for me to get right but we don't have to worry about it in the the rough rough sketch we just get to put the information in there He's freaked out. I don't have the body turned away from the way he's looking. You know, it's always fun to do like the the hand expressions. And I think we talked about this before, but if you ever struggle with these hand poses, just take pictures with your laptop, your phone, and just, you know, if you don't, you don't even got to cheat, you don't even have to trace them, uh, you can just look at them from, from that. Uh, the laptop's really good. I use the laptop for any shots like this because I can look up and t I can tilt the laptop uh, screen and get that camera, and it makes these these close-up shots really easy to get reference for and what you want to do is practice taking the reference and then being able to draw yourself as anybody a little old lady doing this uh, a big bodybuilding superhero whatever you know so you can just use your base uh, pose and character or pose and expression for the reference to that that shot and just overlay your style and the, the better you get at doing that, the uh, the better you'll be able to look at any scene that somebody throws at you and go, yeah, I can draw that, no big deal. You know, so it's really important to do. 
We can do like the motion lines for the intensity. All right, let me read the comments here real quick. Oh, Big Dave's here. Good to have you back, Big Dave. Uh, let's see. Well, that's uh, sci-fi zombies from the Necro. Man, you guys really want some zombies, aren't you? I mean, I'm actually probably going to digitally paint uh, some another zombie uh, painting here pretty soon. Probably a bunch of them because I keep doing like one zombie. And I'm like, you know, when do you ever just see one zombie? You don't. He's always got his buddies with him. So I'm going to do a uh, painting of like a whole mess of zombies attacking uh, so what would you, what would it take to get a call out on your channel when, if I finished one of my comics, a freebies, nice, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll do a shout out for your comic. Is that what you're saying? Like, I got no problem with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm all about helping other comic artists with this channel. And that's, that's kind of the, the, you know, the thing it's here for. So yeah, I got no problem with that. I'm not big on when people like self blast comments on my uh, videos and things like that. I'll delete those because I think that's rude. But it, the way that you're asking, yeah, that's more than justifiable. And yeah, I'll, I'll shout it out on one of the videos. Definitely, or maybe just one of the live streams. We're kind of shouting it out right now. So what's your uh, what's your comic name? Yeah, let me know and I'll just I'll I'll spill it out. I got no problem with that. So, so does this give you guys a better idea of how you could lay those out, you know? And then, you know, since we're kind of going with the storyline, you guys kind of mentioned zombies uh, a few times. We could take it, like, the next step further, or the next page. You know, the, the thing that he's looking at, right? So he's, like, freaked out. Something's going on, right? And then out the window of the diner... What do we got? Bunch of zombies trying to get in. There, you guys wanted zombies. Here we go. Let's do some, some quick zombies. Yeah, they always got their mouth real wide open, right? Because they want brains. They're slobbering all over themselves. Or blood, or I don't know if it's slobber. They're probably so dried out, they probably don't have any slobber left, but. They're always walking funny because they're missing an ankle or something. Missing some toes. Yeah, zombies always traveling hurts. <laughs> Alright, I'm just trying to read these comments again. Hold on. Uh, yeah, that was my kitty, man. He, he just comes up and tries to steal the show. I love him. And it's, it's my girl's cat, or our cat, and his name's Kitty. Yeah, she, she didn't have a whole lot of imagination when she's naming her cat, apparently. Space zombies of the future, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so these zombies are trying to get in. And forgive me, these will probably be pretty bad, because I don't... I don't do enough zombies. I should. They're they're definitely popular these days. I mean, probably the I'd say one of the more popular things in general. You know what's funny about zombies too? You guys know that that um, well, if you're around my age, I'm right around late 30s, early 40. I'm 40. That sucks. I'm 40. But anyways, uh, yeah, they were they were created in my lifetime. I never knew that. I just watched a special not so long ago. And zombies uh, were were just really kind of invented. I mean, you could say that they're like reinventions of the idea, of like mummies, which would be a lot, you know, a lot before our time or whatever. But uh, that the actual idea of zombies uh, was, you know, was just kind of came up with, and now they're insanely popular. But yeah, I couldn't believe that when I watched it. I just kind of thought that I don't know that they were like old folklore that they've been around years and years and years before us, but. Um, not so. Well, at least based on the show I watched. Okay, this guy doesn't look like a zombie. Let's give him the big open mouth. Yeah, zombie. Let's see. You know what? Let's just take one of his hands off. He doesn't need two hands to be a zombie. 
So he he lost one of them them their hands. You know, and then you just keep going with it. Obviously, you know, you don't got to draw every one of them, but draw a couple up close that are more in detail. The rest start to silhouette, and you know, but lots and lots of them. Like these are all zombies back here. This one's kind of poking around the side. And then to intensify the scene, we can put cracked glass. You know, like they're they're starting to crack the glass already, so that's why he's freaking out. Okay, let's read the comments again. Uh, okay, Chief Anator and me are currently working on a comic series, but there's not enough currently to, ready to call out. I think uh, he was asking if you'd call out on the possible future. Yeah, <laughs> Zombie Cat, nice. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. when you guys are ready, let me know. We can definitely do that. First your kid comes out, now your cat. <laughs> you need to work on your security. Yeah, you know, I got this real open door policy at my house, you know, it's like, it's the basement, and I'm not gonna lock everybody out, but yeah, I probably should, especially for live streams, so sorry about the distractions, everybody. Um, what were you watching? I thought they began with, uh, yeah, Night of the Living Dead, exactly, that, I'm pretty sure that was the first, uh, introduction of the zombie kind of, uh, you know, idea, and then the phenomenon just... Kind of went from there and went crazy, and here we are now. Everything's zombified. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, when you guys are ready with that comic, no big deal. I'll be, I'll be happy to kind of help out, you know, any way I can. Yeah. Th this is. It's funny. Even this little goofy rough sketch has got me wanting to do. Uh, got got me wanting to do a zombie shot now. That's how it starts. You know, all this stuff starts with these really bad sketches. And, you know, and, and the more you can get uh, ideas into place, <laughs> like this funky leg I just gave this guy, um, the more you can get ideas into place and, and see uh, see into your ideas more with this type of uh, sketch work, the better. And then you'll, uh, you'll just start to make sense of it all. You know, you'll start to look at it and go, man, this would be a cool shot. You know, maybe the, this guy was closer with the, the kind of gasp of, oh no, what's what's happening here? You know, this is supposed to be our hero, so he probably wouldn't be that, quite this scared, but maybe he's still a hero in, in in making, or hero in the making. So, so you know, you got the, you do like the ear, or the back of the ear to show that, you know, you're actually behind the character. So like that. And then, you know, you'd probably have like, the diner table right here, the chairs here, you know, the bench chair, whatever, you know, and you just paint the picture that way. So it's like, there's the, the next shot to, uh, what they're looking at. You get some of the buildings back here. And again, it doesn't have to be pretty at this stage. It probably shouldn't be. You could have like a zombie dragging themselves. You know, you gotta always have that one that totally was just hacked below the waist and He's just dragging himself to Den Den. Sucks because you know he's going to get the leftovers. You know, he's he's like dragging himself. And there's like entrails kind of going on him. Oh, boy. Yeah, the human imagination, man. It's just crazy, crazy place to be. All right, so what else we got here? Um, Oh, great. My mom just showed up at my live stream. Mom, get out of my room. No, oh, good to have you. Thanks, mother. There's a video of the zombies that has changed over time in film and media. It's pretty cool to see the progression. Yeah, yeah. I imagine zombies have taken, you know, like all different types of forms and they've changed the concept over and over. I really like even like one of my favorite ones just recently was, uh, well, not very recent, but how they did them in uh, World War Z. I thought that was a great take on zombies, how they were like more of a 
just a collective disease and, and kind of thing. And I, I thought that was a really neat uh, way, especially like how they would just throw themselves off of buildings or whatever. Uh, just very mindless at that at that stage. I thought that was a cool take on them. Let's see. Uh, and if the table if the table changed in the future, I happily help you out. While wow, such a community among the art community on YouTube, uh, most other places here on the the tube suck. <laughs> well, glad that uh, this channel doesn't suck. Hopefully, it'll uh, keep continuing not to suck. Uh, let's see. Not again. Well. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, Alien said I like the panel you did. Have you seen Z Nation? No, is that a is that a show version of uh, uh, World, War, World War Z? Was that even the name? Am I saying that right? Yeah, and almost a hive mind. Yeah, that's how they kind of reacted. It was really neat. All right, sorry, I can't I can't seem to read the comments and uh, can't walk and chew gum here. So yeah, um. So let me see, what else could we, uh, does that kind of paint the picture of, of what you guys are wanting to know on this particular thing? Is there anything else um, I could explain to, uh, when it, you know, when it comes to laying out a, a comic book page? Or, you know, a certain scene or anything like that? We got about nine more minutes here. We can go a little bit over, but. Yeah, yeah, Mike, take all the credit for raising me. I don't know what you're talking about there. But yeah, it does take a village to raise a child. I, I get it. Felix, are you saying, did I make it? It's We're right at the end, bud. But yeah, you made it to the end. You're, you're here. Hey there, Z Harry. Z Harry D. Um, yeah, so any more questions, you guys? Like, uh... Anything else I should sketch here? Should I just go back to doodling on this guy up here? Oh, and just keep in mind our next uh, So how do you choose from the thumbnails? So so the ones that we've already drawn, is that what you're saying? Yeah, so so basically if I drew these all out like this and I, then I would I would hold these pages side by side and go okay what tells the best story and it, it can be a mix of these it doesn't have to be this page or this page um, I would say the best way to to look at it is you know if you were to narrate it over top which one would fit the narration the best and and that's how you want to make your choice like me personally I would say the ones that I like the most I'll just put a red check by them as far as each one so I like this one the most for that particular shot um, I like this one the most, even though I, I still like this one where he's off in the distance. Uh, I would say I like this one better. Um, I kind of like the bird's eye view on this one because it just feels a little bit more comic book and, you know, I, I don't know. I just like it. Profiles are, can, profiles can get a little bit like a crutch, you know, you don't want to use them too much and, and they get a little bit too easy to do. And then as far as the, the opening shot, um, I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on those. I think they both kind of have the same feel to them. Um, I would probably, the style that I like, I would probably go with this one. So that's how I would do it. And then I would just move this uh, this one up like this and, you know, just go down. And then, and then I would probably scale this down. I do like how this panel here is larger into the bottom. Again, I think it helps give that extra emphasis on the, the uh, you know, the intensity of that shot. So that's what I would do. So my end, my next panel uh, would actually look more like, let me see if I can find some more room here. Let me just merge these together. And get rid of our little zombie one for now. Oop. Okay, so by combining these, my, my end result would look like this. It would be the narrow panel like this with the, you know, this one here. And then the next shot would be the the diner from the bird's eye. So maybe something like this. I like to always overlap them just a little bit. And keep in mind, you can use the overlaps to point 
throughout the story as well. So you, you can use that effect. Uh, then that, uh, the next one would be this, this coffee cup. So again, we could have it point down to that coffee cup shot like that. And then our final one could break and go in front of even the first one, you know, because we know that this is our first establishing shot. It's kind of, it kind of defies the, uh, the problem of the panel break right there. So you could do something like that. So that would be kind of the end result in the storytelling. And really the storytelling should always kind of go like this in American comics. But, you know, you see it still kind of does. I mean, it, it doesn't perfectly. It kind of does this, like a number two. But it's still there. It still works. All right, so let me read these comments real quick. Uh, All right, what about animals? Um, yeah, we could do another one maybe next week. on an Animals aren't my strong suit, uh, you know, unless we draw them like in a more comic style. But, uh, but yeah, we could, we could definitely try that uh, as one of the uh, topics. Uh, profiles, where are they good or what are they? Um, no, it's not profiles, like just a side shot is what I'm saying. So like a silhouette of a side shot or just a side shot of somebody talking. That's what I mean when I say profile. Uh, I mean sketch an animal into animals right now. Yeah, and somebody's answering what profiles are. I appreciate that. Yeah, so uh, so we'll probably do animals in a future one. Um, have you done a stream that uh, fo focuses on facial features? No, I haven't. We could, you know, and that, and that's one I would I would think would be a little bit more in tune with what I uh, what I like to teach or study or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could definitely try animals in the future. We could do uh, facial features, stuff like that. So whatever you guys want to try, you know. So yeah, um, so yeah, I, th I think I think that'll about wrap it up. Unless you guys can think of any anything else uh, that I can address real quick for you. So do you have any questions about this type of layout and and what we're doing here? Do you uh, any questions at all? Yeah, and let me take this time, too, to say, you know, for one, I appreciate everybody coming in and, and checking out the live stream. Um, if you can, uh, if you could support me on the my Patreon page, that's to help me spend more time doing stuff like this with the live streams and the YouTube channel and the Blackstone comic. Uh, and there, it is a reward-based system, too, so you don't just give money like, a, you know, you get stuff like high-res downloads, video tutorials, custom brushes that I make, Um you know, and I might even do a live stream uh, on Patreon at some point. Um, and then also, you know, Gumroad for like video tutorials and uh, to buy custom brushes that I make for Manga Studio and uh, Photoshop. Yeah, so that's uh, that's probably about it, everybody. I appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, stopping by. So uh, it, Make sure that when the video does go live that you comment in the section below and tell me any ideas that you have for the next week. Uh, and I can't guarantee I can bring them every week, but I do my best to uh, to make sure I do these every Wednesdays at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I uh, appreciate everybody taking the time to you know stop by and make comments and help me uh, help me do this. It's it's fun to do, so I appreciate that. Yep, ciao, mama. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Yeah, and you guys are always welcome. If you see anything on here, uh, you know, layouts, whatever, use them. Don't don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. Um, and if you ever need uh, a specific thing covered, you know that you can always comment in my videos, and I'll make sure to add that to my video request list. So, yeah, this is all a community thing, and it's about helping each other out to do what we love doing, you know, making comics. So. So, yep. So once again, everybody, I appreciate you stopping by and there'll be more on the way real soon. So keep drawing, keep having fun and bye for now.